Uh, joining me now is Danielle Walker. She is uh, part of the House of Delegates in the uh, in West Virginia and uh, from the 51st District. We're a little obsessed with West Virginia on this show uh, and uh, they're in the news again. So Danielle, uh, welcome to the program. Thank you, thank you for having me on the uh, program. Uh, no problem, I, I enjoyed your speech uh, fighting for the LGBT community in West Virginia. It's fantastic. So, uh, but for the folks at home who don't know the story, let's start at the beginning. Uh, tell us about Eric Porterfield and what he did to cause some controversy as you guys were debating a House bill in West Virginia. We were debating a House bill and the, the organizational committee meeting went over to the afternoon. We had to um, reconvene that afternoon and there was an amendment that was given to the committee. And when we start questioning the committee, would it allow this particular amendment would know and void all the non-discrimination ordinance that was passed by different cities. And when we started questioning and we asked council if this exactly would happen and council you know, agreed with us that it would nullify, nullify all those non-discrimination ordinance that was finally advanced in West Virginia in the right way, finally giving us an opportunity to bring in big businesses that's going to, you know, allow for us to advance as a state. And I made a statement because I take that NDO ordinance, being a black woman living here in West Virginia, as double protection. And Mr. Porterfield first um, said that you know, in the state code, I am protected by my race and my sex. And then he went on to explain a particular tour that used the F word. And I just sat there in awe. And before I could say anything, um, other delegates came and, and spoke to the amendment and was very passionate and was very upset just by the vile words that was used. And um, yeah, so we tried to call a point of order and that didn't happen. And so when everyone had spoken, I guess I was the last person to speak on it. It, it, was, it was intense and I spoke my truth. I spoke the truth of the constituents that I met on the campaign trail. I didn't need a statistic. See, I had real stories behind those numbers. And so that was very, it was a very alarming, it was disgusting, it was disrespectful. Um, and it was hurtful. Yeah. Not only to myself, not only to my family, my son, but for my friends that's part of that community. And I just did understand why West Virginia was going backwards. So I, I wanna get, uh back to your son and, and to your experience in West Virginia. But I want people to understand the full context of uh, this guy, Eric Porterfield. So uh, he was referring to Milo's tour and he, and he used the F word, which is derogatory towards the LGBT community. Uh, uh, but he was being, speaking positively about Milo who um, has spoke positively about uh, pedophilia. So it's a curious, champion uh, that Porterfield chose as the one person yes. he likes in the LGBT community. Uh, and But that's not anywhere near all. He, he also called uh, LGBT activists uh, political terrorists. He said they were vicious. He compared them to the KKK. Uh, when yes. asked by a reporter uh, what if his uh, kids uh, were gay, he said if my son were said that, that he would take him out hunting and fishing. He would take his daughter out for a pedicure and then said if he didn't, if that didn't work, I'd take them out uh, swimming, meaning he would drown them. And so this is as bad a guy as, as there could be in that context and probably in any context. Uh, and unfortunately, I mean, he won, you know, he, he, this guy won an election against somebody who was a school teacher for decades and gave people a wonderful choice in West Virginia. Unfortunately, they didn't take that. So um, Danielle, can you tell us about, uh, your son? Yes, uh, I have a 21 year old. Uh, Dimitri actually uh, came out while he was in high school. I am very thankful for West Virginia where he felt comfortable to come out to his teachers and also to his friends. Um, he did not come out to me until his second semester in college. 
And I was so thankful at that time that we lived in a state where he wasn't judged, where he wasn't persecuted, when he where he wasn't even hurt. Um, my sons, both of them, are my world. They are they are my motivation. And I want Dimitri not only to work in the state, not only to pay taxes, but he should have the rights just as anyone else has. Whether he is going to apply for a home or a job, and he should not be fired or evicted for choosing to love who he chooses to love. And you know, we we all go through lessons and it was really alarming because as a woman, I felt, do you want to take away women's rights? As a person of color, I wondered, do you want to revoke my rights also? So this was, this, this it, it took me off guard, but it made me aware. And with that awareness, I wasn't going to allow his hate to infiltrate the state. And so that's why I spoke so passionately in that committee meeting. And I called out what they feel my child, his friends, my friends, my allies are. And it wasn't a it wasn't a counteract because I truly feel that they are the doctors, they are the engineers, they are the advocates, the activists. You call them all these names. I call them children. And children, that is the best gift of love ever. So, but of all these things that I express them to be, I call him son. I will never, I've never been more proud to say that Dimitri is my son in that moment. Yeah. I knew that I was taking a stand from my son. And for other children who doesn't have a parent that's accepting. And it was heartbreaking listening to the interview when he said he would take his daughter for a manny and his son hunting. I thought how sexist. And then he said he would test to see if they could swim. That's right. Yeah, I, I, I didn't say it quite right, uh, Danielle did. Not uh, taking them swimming, he said, take them to see if they can swim. And hence if the reference, yeah, hence the reference to drowning. Um, so D Danielle, it's it's an interesting situation, right? Because um, yes. he, first of all, I wanna be clear, Porterfield's amendment lost, right? Of course, it did, uh, now 12 it, to 10. Yeah, now 12 to 10 though, it was close, it was real it close. Was very close. Yeah, and so, I, you know, you're in this interesting situation where you're a, a state delegate in West Virginia. You mentioned a couple yeah. of times they were being proud of West Virginia, uh, and and I get that. Uh, at the same time, there's some challenges there, right? Um, it is a state that is generally very conservative, voted overwhelmingly for Donald mm -hmm. Trump, votes for guys like Eric Porterfield, and mm -hmm. you're an African American uh, woman there, and you've got a, you know a gay son, and so how? I'm curious, how do you feel about living in West Virginia? How has your experience been? And I don't prejudge it at all, I'm just genuinely curious. Yes, I've had a wonderful experience. I live in a very diverse town. I live in Morgantown, where we have a university there. And so we have more diversity in my area. So I have not witnessed this type of prejudice. And I've lived in this state, it's going on nine years this year in the summer, in June, it'll be nine years that this has become our home. Um, I've only had two incidents of racial prejudice, very minimum, but they were there. And so I have not witnessed what other people witness. And I'm very thankful for Morgantown. I'm very thankful that we're more progressive and a little bit more diverse. <sighs> And so that's why I've made a commitment for the rest of the Porterfields that's in West Virginia. As a delegate, when he asked for me to resign, he asked for my resignation in that interview at the end. On Monday, I signed my pre-candidacy 
with two other women of color. One who's going to run against Porterfield in his district, Miss mm-hmm. Tina Russell. And also Sammy Brown, who is a current delegate, that he also asked for her resignation. So this is how we change negative to positive. I love it. Uh, Danielle Walker fighting for the people in West Virginia in the 51st uh, district. Uh, and, and a lot of good folks in West Virginia. Richard Ojeda brought this story to our attention in the first place yes. and, uh, and, and has done a video about it on facebook.com slash rebelhq that you can check out. Danielle, uh, thank you again uh, for representing all of us. Thank you, I appreciate you. Thanks for watching this free clip of Rebel Headquarters. Don't forget to become a TYT member today for more exclusive content. Join now at tyt.com slash join.